Welcome to the Nuclear Snail channel. In this episode I will talk about inspiration. Where and how to get inspiration, what to do if after hours of staring at pictures of other people's work and concept arts you still don't know what the hell you are supposed to do with your costume, how to get started. Maybe you've just discovered this whole post-apocalyptic costuming and prop making hobby or maybe you are making a work and it's going great but then you just hit a creative wall. You don't know what else to add to it or how to proceed. So all those problems can be summed up as inspiration problems and I will help you in this episode to debug the problem and to make the best costume you can make. But before that, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to never miss any updates. Also feel free to join the Nuclear Snail community group on Facebook. It's linked in the video description. You can uh, post your questions there, show your works um, and just chill out with the rest of the community. And for the regular viewers of the channel, please support me on Patreon if you aren't doing so yet. Because my Patreon supporters are the sole reason that this channel still exists and keeps developing. As a small-time YouTuber, I'm not earning almost any money from YouTube itself at all. So it's all up to my Patreon supporters and I thank them very much. Alright, back to the topic of the inspiration. The core problem is the transition from a vague ideas and emotions in your head, such as I just want to make a cool post-apocalyptic costume, oh my god, this is awesome, to specific shapes and forms. So this transition is something that veterans find a lot easier, although to us veterans it doesn't come 100% of the time all by itself either. But specifically noobs need to guide this process a lot and need to make some decisions and I will help you determine how to guide it. Now, if you cannot decide at all, if you're just like, I want to make something, goddammit, and I have no idea, I have no preference whatsoever, just roll a dice or uh, pick a random attribute. Light, heavy, strong, uh, wimpy, um, stylish, you know? There are so many attributes, just pick a random character attribute or like two or three of them, like heavy and stylish. There you go, what I'm imagining right now for heavy and stylish is a really heavy post-apocalyptic Landsknecht armor. <laughs> something and costume, something like this, like you know with those feathers historically inspired and all that. Uh, or uh, light and agile and dark. Uh, some sort of a hooded ninja character that runs around, doesn't have almost any armor on him and just gray and black tones. So just pick some attributes if you're not sure. Also what helps a lot in terms of getting specific is when you look at inspirations, uh, do not just look at them and enjoy them. <laughs> yes, that's right, I just said do not enjoy art. <laughs> if you want to actually get good at art, you need to also stop your monkey brain from just liking what you see and you need to enable your logical robot brain and analyze every single element. So why does this look cool? What exactly is going on here? So we have a hood. A hood is attached or maybe just under a harness. We have thick belt straps going over the shoulder. We have red thick metal hooks right here, which are attached by a rope, which is brighter than uh, the rest of the costume. We also have a circle clasp right here. We also have some officer decoration right here in a golden color. We also have a red highlight right here. You see, I'm looking at the specific attributes of what's going on. We have those ropes going along the back, central, more or less symmetric, not entirely. We have a hose, asymmetric, doesn't happen on the other side. We have a size difference right here. So you need to start analyzing your inspiration. You need to start breaking them down if you really want to understand why you even like them in the first place. And then going from here, you will be able to say, man, I really like the fact that there is some red here that really adds to the look, but I don't, don't want those to be metal hooks. That is just over the top for my character. It doesn't fit him, whatever. So then, you know, I, I just need to add some red elements because this element, it being red, is what you like in this picture, just as an example. Or maybe you don't like red, you like the fact that those are hooks, but you want some other hooks, you want them to look more cyberpunk, because you like cyberpunk. So you need to start breaking down your inspirations visually and logically. And that will also reveal a lot of um, the making process of this. Like, how was this made? 
Well, if you break it down into the core elements, that's a belt on top of another belt and so on and so forth. So it also helps you technically break down your inspirations. Having a client talk with yourself. Now, what does that mean? What I mean by that? Uh, I do commissions for people, right? For my clients. And they will usually come to me uh, looking for something cool. Now, a lot of times they will have a more specific idea. Either it will be uh, some sort of a specific clothing item, such as this leather vest, for example. This is also a recent commission. I will use it as example for uh, talking about some stuff down the line in this video. Um, or maybe they sometimes uh, have a rough idea about what their LARP or Wasteland Weekend or whatever character needs to be. So for example, an agile guy or a really armored heavy kind of warrior or a scavenger, not a warrior at all, and so on and so forth. They will have some very, very rough idea and I will ask questions and make it more and more specific from there. So the questions I will usually ask is, uh, what are your do's and don'ts? Do you want armor or do you want no armor or like a medium amount of armor? Uh, what is your character like? Uh, and sometimes they will answer specifically, sometimes they will say just like, mm, I don't know, my character is, you know, just a scavenger, go ahead, do whatever you want. But I really hate military gear. So in that case, I will be avoiding military gear. So you need to do that kind of dialogue with yourself. Uh, ask questions about this and that and everything, basically. Uh, because if you don't know what you want to do specifically, you can't do it, right? Uh, so how specific do you need to get? Actually, just for the start, not that specific at all. I have talked about this in my Getting Started video, which you should also watch, by the way. It talks about more than just inspiration, about also some other aspects. But uh, in terms of this, of inspiration, you don't need to get very specific in the first uh, step. In the very first step, you actually are even better off staying rather vague, but not entirely vague. What do I mean by that is very rough parameters such as raider, so a bad guy, uh, heavy armored, so not a light guy, a heavy guy, like just those two. That already gives you a start. From there on you go, okay, what weapon does he use? You can think about the practicality, the backstory of your character. So actually, the moment you think about it, 90% of all of your inspiration problems disappear. If you just think about practicality, it's not the only method, but it's a very powerful one. So it's what I just named. Is he armored? Is he uh, carrying a melee weapon? Is he carrying a minigun? Um, so the rest of the character will be done according to that. If he's carrying a minigun, well, that's your back work right there. The entire back work inspiration solved because you need to carry that ammunition for that heavy minigun. Just as an example, if he is carrying a melee weapon, well, maybe he wants to protect uh, his uh, left shoulder, because uh, this jacket is for a lefty, by the way, so he would be fighting with his right shoulder to the front, with his weapon being in the left. So you might want to protect the shoulder that is going to be facing the enemy more times, more. So, uh, and it goes beyond just combat. Uh, like for medics, you obviously need your medic supplies. And I always say, don't put it all in a small medic bag. Put it all onto your body so people can see the syringes and all that. At least for the more higher fantasy settings. Uh, so practicality. A scavenger would have uh, lighter gear. They would not walk around in heavy armor all day scavenging. Uh, unless they're going to toxic zones, in which case they will have a rebreather and so on and so forth. So you see just how powerful thinking a bit about your character story is. It solves a lot of your inspiration problems. And um, another way to go about this is to see uh, things visually. So if you're just making something, you don't have that much of a character story, you're just going to a festival, you want a cool thing, like you want a leather vest. And let's say... Um, there would not be those yellow stripes and this would be just blank and you're stuck in the middle of the process and you're like what do I add here? What can I possibly add here? What could I add? I could add another metal pieces to make this symmetric or I could complement this red scarf I'm wearing with some yellow 
I have so many triangle elements right here. It would look really cool if I added some kind of a circle element as a contrast, you see? Triangle, 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 uh, triangle, everywhere triangles. And here you add some circular element and it stands out and looks cool. So you can go visually or by practicality uh, features or both at the same time. Obviously, if you're like a zone scavenger and want to have your rebreather backpack, you will need to pick something that also looks nice or make something that also looks nice. Also, a lot of people need decisions, not information at the point they're asking the questions about inspiration. So you have all the inspirations, you have seen all the uh, internet image searches, you have posted in the group and asked the questions and people have shown you more stuff that they've made, but you still uh, are asking for inspiration. Well, here is a newsflash for you. You don't need more information, you need to decide. And no one except you can decide that for you. And if someone else decides that for you, then what's the point? Like, why are you doing this? It's the most fun part to decide that, hey, I've saw those inspirations, I really like this part and that part and this part, I hate that part, so I'm not take doing that. So here are the things I like and I throw them together and th this is my costume. Uh, it's another thing that you can do, obviously, you can combine different things. You can say, oh, I really like the idea of a red scarf, but the way uh, this jacket has a belt right here, mm, I don't like that. Uh, so for my jacket, I will do something else. Uh, by the way, talking about this belt specifically, uh, this was actually one of those uh, practicality inspiration things. Uh, and I'm talking a bit now uh, about getting yourself unstuck in the process. Like, you say you're making the jacket, oh, what do I add to this area? I don't know. Uh, well, for me, just the zipper broke as I was working on it. I was like, okay, it broke, so I'll just go from there and improvise. Uh, it's also not an unrealistic thing. Like, your cheap-ass leather jacket would break on all, uh, on all places, especially the zipper, so you would need to keep it closed with something else. So I've just added this belt. Obviously, I've chosen a belt that fits color-wise and otherwise, uh, but this was actually not driven by any early stage concept art decision that I've decided, oh, I want a belt on my waist. No, just my zipper broke. I went from there. Uh, you can obviously, if your zipper doesn't really break, you can break it on purpose or just pretend it's broken and it obviously doesn't only apply to zippers. It can apply to anything, so... Uh, just feel free to imagine what would happen after some wearing and uh, action and use, uh, especially many years after the apocalypse, and to improvise something that will fix the problem, that will solve a lot of problems. Uh, also, for example, these bags right here from a tactical vest uh, that was uh, partially practical uh, because, uh, you know, you have a jacket, you want to carry your stuff somewhere, especially considering that I've bolted shut a lot of the inner pockets, so <laughs> it needs some other pockets. Um, and this, at the same time, it, it is also visually breaking up this entire leather jacket pattern, making it look like a combination of military and civilian, which I've talked about in the past in my How to Get Started video, I think. Uh, so it does a lot of things in one go. And yeah, before we go to the next point, sorry, I will actually quote my friend Callum the Dust Monkey on this, on the power of just sitting down and deciding and doing already. Just fucking do it, says the dust monkey. Stop overthinking. Stop fucking about on image search sites for a year and on groups asking the same inane shit. I see this a lot. Sit down. Make. Maybe all the shit doesn't matter. Learn, adapt, overcome. That's the only way to ever actually do anything or get better. Put the social media down. Get your hands dirty. Half of what I made, I look back at and go like, nah, that's shit. But every single item has taught me something. Yeah, especially if you're a noob, I've talked about this in the past too. Don't think that your first costume is going to be your last one or that you will be building up upon this forever. Your first costume is a throwaway experiment. Treat it as such. Don't overstress about... Am I picking the right inspiration? Am I doing the right thing? Uh, just do whatever you like, man. Like one of the greatest searches, um, sorry, sources of inspiration is just things you already personally like. Let's say, for example, you like, again, historical stuff. You like the Landsknecht. 
which are those pimp ass mercenaries from the 16th century, I think, with the big Zweihander swords. Incorporate that into your post apocalyptic costume. Like, Callum the Dust Monkey likes British stuff. Almost all of his uh, costumes are, well, not almost all, but a lot of his more memorable and special and great costumes are with some British army inspiration from whatever era. But uh, just take the things that you like and put them together. And that is your inspiration. That is the niceness of the post-apocalyptic genre. I've said this 100 times already. You can take anything as an inspiration, be it post-apocalyptic or not. You can obviously also look at other people's apocalyptic and non-apocalyptic inspiration and costumes. Uh, and here is the most, probably the most powerful advice I can give you uh, to the end of this. Just look at your junk crate. Now, if you then have a junk crate, which is a crate full of junk from which you can craft, that is a bit of a problem in itself, because then you're like, okay, I need to get supplies. What exactly do I need? In that case, you need to think ahead about what you can have. Uh, whereas when making this jacket, I was like, okay, I want just some piece of metal for, you know, that nice metallic partial armor look that I've talked about in the past in some other videos. I want some uh, linear pieces of metal here just because I want them. You know, it's a nice area, it shows off nicely on pictures, so this is a good place to put decorative metal. And I just go to my junk crate and find this piece of an old ruler, and then I add some, you know, other stuff here. And that's it, problem solved. A lot of times I will just put the piece down or put it on and just take something and go like, this is a something, this is a beautiful object. Can I put it here? Maybe. Can I put it here? Maybe. Can I put it there? Oh, perfect. So this is how it will go a lot of times after I have my rough concept. So uh, this is a very, very powerful technique for uh, unbugging and getting unstuck when you're already in the process of making something. This will also sometimes help you get started. Because honestly, if you have a leather jacket lying around waiting to be modded, or if you have like an old officer's coat, uh, or if you have a, some football pads or whatever, you just take that as a base and go from there. Just improvise. Uh, so yeah, having uh, some supplies at hand can help you a lot. I've also made a video about where to get supplies. Anyway, uh, folks, I hope this video was helpful to you. Again, join the Nuclear Snail community group. Support me on Patreon. I will see you in the next episode. And until then, hail the snail.